Hi, this is Meow Mix. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. Wow. Just yeah. Um, Panthers lose 21-13 to the Minnesota Vikings. A game where the defense scored seven of those 13 points. Um, Panthers suck. Yeah. Bryce Young, I don't know. Uh, I mean, to be fair to him, the the offensive line is terrible. The wide receivers can't get open. Um, the running game is bad. The coaching seems to be bad um, uh, offensively. Defensively, it's stellar. You know, the, the sad thing is, is that this team is going to win three games this year, mm-hmm. and we're still going to lose our defensive coordinator <laughs> to, yeah. to be someone else's head coach. So that part, the best part of the team is probably not going to be as good next year. And I, you know, uh, I don't have any any anything good to say about this game, Jerry. Uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Frank Reich, you're insane. Trying to run the ball on first and 10 with Miles Sanders up the middle. You're getting the same result every bleeping time. One yard, two yard. What? Why? What are you thinking? Chuba Hubbard looked a lot better, but you know what you do in the middle of the game? Go back to your same old ritual. I'm sorry. It is it, pathetic and it's over. I am, you know, you talked about Evro. What might need to happen is Frank Wright might need to get the axe and Evro get bumped up. And then you let Thomas Brown actually call plays because Frank Reich looks awful. He, ha- he has that 10 pre-planned plays and they look good. There was some different looks there. They had a tight end in the backfield with uh, Chenault. They did something different. They moved the ball down the field. And then once those 10 plays were done, the offense scored three more points afterwards. Three! They scored Despite three points. Despite being in range of scoring touchdowns a few times, just no, there seemed to be no plan once they got into the red zone. They, oh, they no. had no idea what to do. No, they had a plan. Run it up the middle until it's third and long, and then yeah, that's, have Bryce Young has to fend for his life. Yeah, that's not a plan. They they didn't have a plan. They have they have no no way of getting into the end zone. Are we insane for cheering for the squad? This is like five years now. I I'm seriously tired of it. I'm tired of wasting my Sundays. I'm tired of wasting my child's you know childhood on part of my weekend because I watch this and feel miserable. You know, it's not fun to cheer for this team. It's not fun to have to talk about it <laughs> afterwards, yeah. you know, and it, you know, it, at sometimes it's cathartic today. It's just depressing. I mean, you know, I don't know. It seems like every move that the Panthers have made over the last few years has just been wrong. Mm-hmm. They hired the wrong head coach. They drafted the wrong quarterback. They drafted the wrong left tackle. They traded for they the drafted, wrong quarterbacks. They I drafted mean, the wrong cornerback. Like they, the, the you know, the head coach was here. Steve Wilkes was here. They had the only good time that we've had as Panthers fans over like the last five years is that stretch where Steve Wilkes was the head coach. Yeah. That's the only time that the offense has looked competent on a consistent basis. The fan base was engaged, excited. Yes. And that was with, you know, Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold alternating at quarterback. Right? That was with DJ Moore as our only good wide receiver. I went to Dante the- Foreman as our running back. I went to the like, coldest game in Panthers history and cheered my butt off, as well as many other people that were there and enjoyed ourselves. Why? Because the team played well. Yeah. He embra- he embraced the city. He embraced the history of the team. I, and Tepper was like, nah, not Frank, interested. Frank Your had, defense. Frank Reich did engross himself in this franchise history and everything but it's just no 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 this history the the history of this team is a pound the rock play hard defense team 
That is what this team has always been. That is when this team has been most successful. Yes, but I was talking about more, you know, the legend, you know, keep pounding and all that. that yeah, that's fine. I don't really care about all that. Like, that, we get rid of keep pounding if we're going to win a Super Bowl. I don't care about that. What I care about is, and I do care about it, but what I care about is winning football, right? And I, I don't know what Frank Reich, you know, I mean, at least the running and the passing were, you know, in terms of how many times we did it was pretty even in this game but they just they ran the same f and play over and over and over again when they ran yep. the ball every time chenault gets the first rush of the game i'm thinking okay they yes. you know they finally decided to do something he doesn't touch the ball again in terms of rushing he has one reception uh by the way a screen pass hello and, and he had another screen pass where he got a first down without a whole then but a holding call to yeah. Called it back. And Another like, screen pass. That's all like, they do with him. That's all they do on any third and long or any obvious passing down. It's a screen pretty pass. much every, it's like every span, down. They have a playbook of like four or five plays and just spam the same ones. You're in the NFL, man. It's just pathetic. I know. It's, dep- it's depressing. It's depressing. And, I, you know, I've, I've been trying to preach patience to you, to the fan base, to our other friends who like to jump, you know, when the first bad play, you know, like that commercial where, you know, everyone's burning jerseys and yeah. throwing stuff out the window after the first play of the game. But man, like, I don't have it anymore. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's not, it's, this is obviously not working. This is not the right way to go Nope. for this team. And I, you know, and, and and there's no light at the end of the tunnel because even if you do win three games this year, you don't have a first round pick. Mm-hmm. No. You can't get that franchise changer at number one, number two, number three. That You don't have that option because you thought you addressed it this year and maybe you did, but early returns are not good for Bryce. It, it feels like it feels like they don't know the style of players that they have on this roster. It feels like they still want to do something that this team is not ready for. It feels like they want to do a spread, like throw the ball and then run it up the middle with that one back. But this team does not have the ability to do that. The O-line just can't block without help for passing downs. They're not opening up holes up the middle in this shotgun formation. Yet that's all they're they not, they get do. no penetration. They get no penetration at all on no. any defensive line we play. No. And the Vikings don't have an all-star defense. There's no way you should score six points against this Vikings team. Five sacks, it's, eight it's tackles insane. for loss. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It looks like the Panthers are playing in mud. C.J. Henderson, every time he's in coverage, he's falling down. Oh, no. That, don't get me started on <laughs> C.J. Henderson. I mean, you they, know, they overall, I thought the, the Panthers' defense did a, a pretty dang good job today. I did, too. Like, to hold the Vikings a, you know, high-powered offense to 21 points, and really, seven 14. of those were, de- yeah, seven of those were defensive, so 14 points. You held Justin Jefferson to six catches. 85 yards. 85 80. yards. And, and, you know, two touchdowns, but, you know, you kept him in check most of the day. Yes. I, the defense did their job. This offense, you just do the bare minimum and you, you win this game. I mean, I, I don't know what to do. I don't want to watch these Panthers again. This is like the third year. Like, I'm just to this point of being like, I. I we own a pot. We own a podcast about the Panthers, and we don't want to, or I don't want to watch these games. It brings me misery. I was thinking earlier, is this the last year of the podcast? Like, <laughs> like honestly, I, I don't know. As of right now, if you ask me today, I don't know that I want to do to do it anymore. After the you know after the season, because I. I'm I'm just out. I can't give myself to this team as much as I have over the last, I mean, you know, since 1995. 
Yeah. I've been all the way in, all the way in. And it seems like, I don't know if David Tepper obviously he doesn't know what he's doing, right? In terms of managing no. a franchise. Um, he's he, he doesn't want to commit to a rebuild. I mean, there was reports today that the, the Panthers are looking to trade for a starting wide receiver. At 0-4, I hope that they don't trade more draft capital to bring in somebody to help this year. This yeah. season's over. Fitter needs to be gone, over. too. I mean, what has he brought in that has been successful? No one. No. I mean, I they did a good... They did a good job bringing in Evera, but they, they, you know, they're not securing Burns, who, by the way, maybe that's not a bad idea. I mean, I don't know. Burns is is really good, but he does disappear in games. Uh, yeah. Today was one he, of them. Yeah, he does disappear. And, you know, he, he got doubled some in this game, but there were a lot of plays. Or he was one on one with whoever he was going after. He could not get any sort of penetration. I saw him in the backfield a few times, but for a guy that wants to get paid thirty million dollars a year, you got to be better than that. You got to be a game changer. He is not a game changer right now. I haven't seen it this year. I so I don't. You know, that, and that's our best player. Not our second best player. Our best player is Eddie Pinheiro. But our second best player just cannot show up. Consistently. Uh, shout out to Yitor today. Uh, yeah. You know, Yitor and Chuba, two guys that we were at pretty much out on in the in the offseason and preseason. Um, today, they look like maybe the two best players on the field for the Panthers. It's so sad. When, when mean, Chuba, Chuba got an opportunity. I was <laughs> like, he say, didn't get an opportunity really until the second half. And by even then, though like, he looked better. Even though he yeah. looked so much better in the first quarter. Yeah. I'm just I'm so tired, man. I'm so tired of cheering for this team and getting my heart ripped out every week. It's like, why? I mean, it's not only every week. It's every year. It's every year I kind of pump myself up. Even being reserved... It's just like they're not fun to watch. No, this not is not all. fun. No, I mean Adam Thielen looks good. I think Terrace Marshall looks solid today. It's just Bryce did what he could do, but he didn't throw the ball deep at all, except for one time, which I thought should have been pass interference, but was considered defensive holding. And then we yeah, turned I don't, the ball over. I didn't, I didn't really, really understand that. It wasn't even defensive holding. It was. Like um, illegal contact, illegal contact or something. Yeah. Which was a five yard penalty. And he was all over him the whole way. Yeah. I was like, like it, yeah, it may have started before the ball was in the air, but it continued while the ball was in the air. Yeah, we should have had the ball DJ on the Char. three yard line instead of fumbling yeah. it. And... <sighs> but, you know, that's that's not why we lost. Oh, I mean, no, 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 no. you know, that's not. Yeah, but it, it's, uh, you know, they just. They, they're doing, like you said earlier, like they're doing the same things every week over and over and over again. They're not changing it up at all. Something has to change, whether that's Frank Reich not calling plays anymore and giving it to Thomas Brown and just seeing if he can do something different. I mean, that's the easiest thing to change, right? Because he's already in the building. You don't have to make any personnel changes. Frank Reich just says, okay, you know what? We're 0-4. The, the, the offense has not progressed since the first preseason game, right? Yeah. Other than last week with Andy Dalton, who is not the future of the team. If you're going with Bryce, you got to give him an opportunity to do something. You got to you gotta take the reins off. Let him throw downfield. Let him play like, some yeah. backyard football. You're... you're your receivers aren't the best in the world, but my God, give them a chance to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup down the field. Like, do something. DJ Chark targeted three times a day. Yeah, he's our he's our deep threat. Terrace Marshall was targeted ten times today. Had nine catches for fifty-six yards. That should tell you, like, that's all screen passes. Yeah, or, or screen, you know, behind the sticks. Yeah. 
Oh man. I, I'm just it's... so tired. I, I love the fact that Ian Thomas has one one target. <laughs> one target. The only target in the red zone that the Panthers threw the to one. the end zone was to Ian Thomas. And that yeah, I mean they were and like that was designed. Why? They were like within well, the what eight makes yards. You think Ian Thomas is obviously gonna turn around and become a decent tight end. That, yeah, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like it's <laughs> these 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 decisions don't make any sense. Logically, they don't make any sense. It's like they it's like they came in and they've never seen these players before. And they're like, all right, well, you know, I've seen other football teams do this. Let's do this with these guys. Yeah. No, no, these guys don't fit that. I don't know what these guys fit, but they don't fit that. You went, you traded all this draft capital to go up and get Bryce. What are you doing? What are you doing with him? How are you, how are you making him grow? How are you helping him be successful? Like it's not, he's not successful because he's in a terrible position, honestly. And I'm so tired of hearing about how great of a processor he is and how incredible his mind is that, okay, you know what? I'm a pretty good processor too. I have a pretty good mind too. I'm not going to go out there and play quarterback in the NFL and I'm taller than Bryce. I don't care. Like maybe he's going to be a great head coach one day. But if he's going to be a great quarterback in the NFL, I need to see something soon to at least give me a spark of hope, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, with C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson, who they're always going to be compared to each other, just like Goff and Wentz and Jameis and Mariota, like all these guys, they're always compared to each other when they go you know, very close like that. And... No one is is like head and shoulders better than the other. Stroud and Richardson have shown a lot yeah. of potential, right? They're winning games. Bryce is not winning anything, and he's not throwing past the sticks. He's taking terrible sacks. He's fumbling the ball. He looks overmatched constantly it is not fun it's just not fun to watch and there's no hope there's no hope I, 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 yeah i mean i don't know what else to say to panthers fandom i mean what are you hanging your hat on right now why do we why why are we watching these games every week what is it that's bringing us back this is our team. This is our team. We love our team. We love our city. But our team is not showing us the love back. It hasn't been since Tepper took over. Yeah. Oh, you know, we were talking earlier about Tepper and, you know, whether he has the real desire to win or is he just in it to make money? And we we would like to to think that Tepper wants to win, right? Uh, I think there, he wants to win. He just doesn't know any uh, how to. I think well, he's just so used to being in charge and throwing money at things that yeah. it works itself out. He, d- I don't think he understands how to win in the NFL where throwing your money at it and throwing your brass balls on the desk doesn't always work. You have to have a solid plan, yeah. and he doesn't seem to have that. Well... I'll just say that there are owners in sports. There are owners in baseball, basketball, and football who have shown to be more interested in making money than putting a winning product on the field. That happens. There are owners like that. Right now, I don't know if Tepper is is that or is not that. And I think that's a major problem. Because I mean, from what, what we have Rock seen... Facility. I mean... Right. I, I, like he, the turf, right? The turf. We see, you know, the turf. The players complain about the turf all throughout the league. Nobody likes the turf except the owners because it saves them money. Who cares if it's a competitive disadvantage or not? Who cares? They don't. 
the rock kill thing like huge red flag huge red flag i don't know i don't know if tepper is uh you know are we doomed for you know a daniel snyder mark I mean, davis right now, it looks like you it. know like at least mark davis d- tries stuff i mean i don't know I, I, there, are, at, there are a lot I of guess. bad owners, and he might be one. Yeah. As of right now, I would say he is one, right? Like I, the, the proof from what is we've in seen. the record. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he said he wasn't going to tolerate mediocrity. Well, congratulations! This has not been a mediocre, mediocre franchise yeah. since he took over. Please, please bring back mediocrity. <laughs> like yes. at least mediocrity, we're in it. We're we're like around fifty like percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, we're we're some we there are ups and downs, but at least there are ups, right? There are no ups since David Te- Tepper took over, except a short stretch of time where Steve Wilkes was the coach, and then he didn't even get a chance. He didn't even get a chance to stay on. You know, I'd like to maybe do a thought exercise one day. Maybe today's not the day, but just to kind of envision what this team might have been had they gone with Wilkes instead of Reich and just sort of think about, and maybe we just do this ourselves and we don't do it on the podcast, but just think about what the team would have looked like. Cause I think it'd look a lot different, but all right. Well, um, you want to look at some stats here and yeah. kind of wrap this thing up. All right. So Bryce was 25 of 32, 204 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions did have a lost fumble. 204 yards on 32 attempts. You know, that's, I think, the best he's done in terms of yards per attempt so far. But he did take five sacks for 55 yards. That's 11 yards per sack. That's a lot. They, they have to figure out the pl- blocking up front. I mean, he didn't yeah. make any mistakes, but he didn't really have much going for him downfield either. I mean, he didn't have anything. Yeah. I mean, 25 and 32 is nice, but at the same time, how many of those were behind the line of scrimmage? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say at least 10 of those completions were screen passes. I mean, and that I think this boils down to the fact that last year, a lot of the O-line ran a lot of two tight end blocking schemes. And this year, it's almost always no help on that O-line. And it this O-line obviously needs it. Yeah, I mean, they... Something has to change there. That that last play where Icky just mm-hmm. I don't know what what happened. Like they they tried to explain on the broadcast, but it looked just to me like Icky just completely whiffed. Right? And and Bryce didn't even get a throw off the last play of the game. Nope. Chuba Hubbard 14 carries, 41 yards, 2.9 yards per carry. Uh that was the best among running backs by far. Miles Sanders 13 carries, 19 yards. 1.5 yards per carry. Uh, LaVisca and Adam Thielen got a carry. That was probably a screen pass to Adam Thielen, I would imagine. Yeah, and that he was just That behind. was behind him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thielen led the team in receiving seven receptions, 76 yards. Uh, Marshall, as we mentioned earlier, nine for 56. Shark, two for 28 on three targets. Miles Sanders, three for 13. LaVisca, one catch for 12 yards. Chuba, two for 12. Hayden Hurst, one for seven. Hayden Hurst, again, just not involved in the offense. After week one, just not involved in the offense at all. Don't understand that, but oh well. I'm not coaching. Von Bell led the team in tackles with seven. <clears throat> Jeremy Chin uh, had a sack and a QB hit and six tackles. Uh, Yitor got credit for the sack. I thought they could have gone half Yitor, half Burns. Yeah, um, but they gave it all to Etor, and honestly, that's okay. He uh, he he got him mostly down, but it, uh, I mean, Burns should get an assist for that one for sure. Uh, so two sacks for the Panthers. Uh, let's see, two interceptions uh, for the Panthers: Franklin and Grugier Hill. Yeah, and each Franklin got an interception. Had that huge ninety-nine yard touchdown, which we should be talking about more. But I mean, it's yeah. so disappointing on the defense. I mean. Well, I mean, we've we've mentioned over and over again the defense played really well today. Defense yeah, is mean, not the problem. I mean, look, they they gave they spotted the offense that last three points in that half by yeah. Grugier Hill's interception. You know, get yeah. hitting him and then 
popping the ball up. I mean, they were in scoring position. And you give yeah. the offense a drive. And then they waste 20 seconds. Bad clock management. Terrible they had clock two management. timeouts. Instead, they're running up trying to clock it. Why is Frank Reich not calling a timeout there? Yeah. I mean, common sense. Common clock management sense. I thought it was also, and we'll get back to the stats in a minute, but I thought it was also pretty terrible uh, at the end of the game there where it's third down. And you know you've got to go for it on fourth down. You've got a timeout in your pocket. Just throw it somewhere within the 10-yard line, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe somebody makes a guy miss, maybe not. But you've got that timeout. And then you're having your last play with a realistic shot, right? And that changes a lot. That changes everything, I think. You also have Bryce Young, who's more mobile than people give him credit for. Yeah, well... Again, that's something I wish we'd see more of too from him. It, it doesn't seem like they want him to run. They they have really kind of a, clamped him down because there are some run plays up the middle on first down where I kind of wish he would just hold on to it, skirt out, and he could get seven to ten yards easily, slide, yeah. and just. Give I'd love to that. see rollouts with him, like rollouts. Let me see more um, play action. Like we just don't. They're not doing a lot of that. I don't know. Five plays. Uh, it, yeah. Eddie P was two for two, 56 yard field goal at the end of the first half was very nice. Uh, and then Hecker, five punts, two of them inside the 20. He had a fine day. Uh, Kirk Cousins, 12 for 19, 139 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. That's what I'm saying. Like the Panthers did a good job of keeping what the Vikings do best down. Like they did yeah. a, good, a good job of it. Uh, Madison had 17 carries, 95 yards. Cam Akers, 5 for 40. Uh, 23 for 135 overall for the Vikings. Like, they did, they did a good job in the run game. But we could tell from the first play yeah, that they were going to be able to run the ball all over us. I mean, that that's the Achilles heel of 3-4 defenses in general yeah. is their run defense. And it continues. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson, 6 receptions, 85 yards, 2 touchdowns. And that's it, really. I mean, Hawkinson two for twenty one, two for twenty four, Osborne one for sixteen, Cam Akers two for eleven, Madison one for three. That's it. They held Addison to nothing. Yeah, good yeah. job by the secondary. Yeah, yeah, good job by the secondary. Um, defensively, Harrison Smith led them. Just had a an incredible day. Fourteen tackles, three sacks, two tackles for loss. Three quarterback hits, like he just he was everywhere. Uh, he he got that last sack on Bryce as well. <clears throat> Again, that that's the guy that's going up against Icky. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Hicks, thirteen tackles. Uh, Bynum, twelve tackles. Five sacks overall for the Vikings. No interceptions, but they didn't really have to. Um, no field goals, so. Uh, looking at the team stats real quick, the Panthers were 5 for 14 on third downs, Vikings 1 for 8. <clears throat> so, you know, the Panthers, again, defense, you know, other than the running game, but even the running game, like, they're letting them get some chunk plays, but when it comes down to, like, third downs, when it comes down to keeping them out of the end zone, the Panthers do a good job of it, yeah. right? It's a bend but don't break defense, and we've seen that have success here in Carolina many times. I mean, the defense scored 10 points in my head. They got the touchdown, yeah. and then they got the another turnover that led to three points. That was just a quick, easy yeah. pass play. So, I mean, that, the offense scored three points on a defense that's mm -hmm. given up 30 points a game. Yeah. Panthers had the ball 38 minutes and 30 seconds to 21-30 for the Vikings. I mean, again, when you look at this, like, how did we? How did the Panthers lose this game? No offense. No offense. Yeah. Ball control was incredible. Almost forty minutes of ball control. That's. I, I bet if you looked up in the history of the NFL, teams with more than thirty-eight minutes of ball control probably win. I don't know, eighty percent of the time, ninety percent of the time. Third down efficiency: five for fourteen compared to one to eight. Against Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota had one first down on third down. Yeah. And one for two on fourth down. So two for 10 on third and fourth downs for Minnesota. 
Carolina two for three on fourth down. So seven for 17 on those same situations. Again, like this game was there. This game was there for the taking. This is like two or three games this year that were there for the taking, but the offense couldn't muster up crap. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Um, Heroes and zeros. Uh, Are we both going Yitor for hero? I think I am. I'm going to give somebody else that. If okay. you want to give, he, I mean, yeah. he deserves it. I'm not Etor, it. Etor, I, it's never happened before in the history of the podcast. So I will happily give Etor Gross Matos the hero of the game for the Panthers. Yeah, rightfully so. I'm going to give it to, to Sean Jamison, cornerback. Mm. Undrafted guy, second game <clears throat> on this team, played four downs last week. This week, he made a key block on Kirk Cousins on Sam Franklin's run back that I think Mm -hmm. that Kirk Cousins would have gotten him pushed out of bounds if he didn't come and block him. Then he also was covering Justin Jefferson a majority of the game. Put a wicked hit on him too. Yeah. And I think he did a good job. I mean, there was a, one of the touchdowns was his fault. I think he He gave up the touchdown, but for the most part, I want to give the guy credit for stepping in and looking better than CJ Henderson, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, Stepping up seemed- against the best wide receiver in the league, in my opinion. I know people argue Tyreek Hill, but I, I felt yeah. like he did a solid job, and I want to give him credit for that. No, I th- yeah, I, I agree. I think Justin Jefferson is the best receiver in the league, and the, like I said, the Panthers did a good job overall holding him to uh, kind of a normal day. Yeah, not like, and he's an abnormal player. Yes, he, well, we talked about it. he's <laughs> he had he had 150 yards in every game coming in, right? They held him to half that, basically. Oh, so, that was my beer butt. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, zeros. I mean, Sanders for me. Yeah, I'm thirteen gonna go carries, see. nineteen yards. Got nothing going today. Yeah, Sanders. I'm uh, Sanders or Frank Reich. You can toss them up. Yeah. Do you think that they do change the play caller after this game? No, is Frank Reich Reich, gonna Reich seems hard headed in that. Like he seemed last week when he was asked that question, shocked that it was already. He seemed offended. Yeah. Yeah. He seemed offended. Well, he should be offended because we're offended. Yeah. We're offended having to watch this shit every week. Uh, What has the offense given two touchdowns in four games or is it three touchdowns? I'm trying to think. I know Uh, if you take if you take the Dalton if you take the Dalton game away. It's it's pathetic. I mean, honestly, it's there's no other word for it. The defense is if I was a defensive player on this team, I would just I'd want to hang it up and just be like, get me out of here, please. I mean, put me on a team that has a chance, that knows what they're doing, that has a plan. I mean, this this is what you're going to run into. A hundred percent that. You're going to have people going, players on the opposite team being getting upset with the offense to the certain point of exactly that, just giving up. Like, they'll play hard, but, I mean, they're just like, whatever, I'm cashing a check. I'm I, I'm going to put some tape on, and when I hit free agency, I'm out. Or I'll cash in here and just continue to be whatever. Yeah, I mean, the Panthers are the get-right team now that other teams go up against. Oh, 100%. To, to get their seasons back on track, right? It, it's been like that now. Who do we have next week? I think Detroit. The Dolphins. Dolphins or Detroit. We're going to get spanked. Detroit next week. Two road games coming up. Detroit and Miami. And then the and then the Houston Texans, who I think are 2-2 two and two now. I think they yeah, won today. they did. And then the Colts, who... Uh, almost one today. I mean, we're not legitimately looking at zero and eight going uh, into I mean, uh, the Thursday I mean, honestly, night game. If this offense can't get it together, I don't see a single win in this r- season. I'm not even joking. The Bears looked kind of competent today on offense. They, I think, ended up losing, but that's the Thursday night game. Then the Cowboys. Then the Titans. Then three division games in a row. Packers, Jags, 
Bucks. Yeah, there's no there is no game on the schedule that I think the Panthers will win. Could win several, but if you put a gun to my head and said which one are they going to win, I couldn't tell you. Nope. I I, I couldn't tell you. All, All right. right. Uh, real quick, uh, t- in NFC South games, Tampa Bay won twenty six nine. I'm kind of laughing just because. Everybody hyped up New Orleans so much, and they don't look as good as everybody thought. Well, the, uh, Derek Carr's out, right? I mean, he's – it was Jameis, and then I thought somebody else ended up coming in for them. No, Carr was in there. Sorry, yeah. Carr was in there. Yeah. He just looked terrible. Oh, poor baby. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we want to thank everyone for listening. If you like the show, please let your friends know. Please follow us on Twitter at Meow Mix Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmixpodcast.com. If you leave us a five-star review with a comment on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it on the show. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. This week, we'll probably do a fan reactions or fan uh, griping, uh, considering our person who emailed and called in wants to call in. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, F- Falcons also lost. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, Falcons. Jacksonville beat the um, Falcons in London this morning. By the way, the Toy Story thing was cool, but not ready for prime time. Not ready at all. It, it, yeah. it had a lot of glitches. I'm shocked it was so glitchy for something but they promoted so hard on. I like that they're trying things. Oh, my daughter, who's three, yeah. was all watching it. She was like... Yeah, my- my boys, six and three, no interest in football up to this point. They liked it. They thought it was cool. So I hope they try more of that stuff. Yeah. Me too. All right. Well, we'll be back uh, to talk uh, week five and maybe do some listener stuff as well. Until then, everybody stay safe out there and keep pounding.